From Tracing Autism by Des Fitzgerald In the summer of 2015, the National Institutes of Health, NIH, announced that it was joining a group of private and nonprofit partners to fund a $28 million research project looking for biomarkers of autism. Researchers based at Yale University were seeking objectively measurable biological signs that would, among other things, allow for a diagnosis of autism that was no longer based only on an assessment of behavior. The impetus behind the project was fairly clear. In recent years, whether as a biological, social, cultural, or scientific phenomenon, autism has become increasingly prominent. Yet, the biological basis of its core features remains surprisingly elusive. In fact, despite many years of research, we still have no firm, coherent marker of autism at either the neurobiological or genetic levels. This is a problem for researchers looking for autism interventions. It's especially a problem when researchers try to figure out what effect a potential intervention has. How, for example, do you measure the effect of an intervention across a group of people when, without a firm mark, it's not always clear that each person actually starts from the same biological place? The NIH project is working on this question by using electroencephalogram, EEG, a brain measure, to track changes in autistic people over time. The ultimate goal, according to the project leader, Yale psychologist James McParkland, is to produce a set of measures that can be used as biomarkers of social and communicative function in ASD, autism spectrum disorders, and that could serve as indicators of long-term clinical outcome in clinical and drug development studies. Or, as he put it more succinctly in the Hartford Current, the project is looking for ways of quantifying human behavior that is not subjective and don't involve human clinical judgment. How is it that in late 2015, by that report, our scientific accounts of autism are so ineluctably rooted to the realm of the subjective? How is that a developmental diagnosis can be so present and so visible, and yet also so heterogeneous and so mysterious? This is a central conundrum of neuroscientific research on autism. Sitting underneath that conundrum is a fairly widespread desire however likely or unlikely individual researchers think it is, to identify some kind of stable, organic, and objectively measurable sign. For many, it is the neurosciences, especially neuroimaging, that will likely provide that sign. The research literature is replete with teams using one or more brain imaging methods to identify something in how the brain works, or how it is formed, or what it looks like structurally or how its regions get connected that will offer, finally, a definite and reliable sign of autism. In this book, I'm interested in that attempt. I'm especially interested in what happens and what it means when researchers take a diagnosis as complex and as heterogeneous as autism and try to locate it more or less solidly in some function or substrate of the human brain. It is one thing to lament that autism is still identified in a surprisingly subjective, or at least non-biological way. But what would it actually mean to do research that would move the diagnosis onto some firmer terrain? How would that happen? What would it look like? What would actually be at stake in the attempt? Centrally at stake, of course, are biological and clinical questions about the identification of autism as well as questions of intervention, which remains controversial. But it also seems to me that at the heart of this tangle of biological certainty and diagnostic ambiguity, there are important questions for medical sociology and anthropology, and for science and technology studies too. Because what's also going on here is the production and working through of a series of tensions that intersect some of the most complex and important questions at the heart of those disciplines. Tensions between autism and neuroscience, between biological markers and complex conditions, between bodies and lives, between objective measures and subjective accounts. 
Throughout this book, I think about those tensions and the complex tangle that holds them together. What follows is an attempt to talk to and with a series of neuroscientists about how they think and feel their way through that tangle and about the work that they do, conceptual, experimental, emotional, to pry it gently apart. From Tracing Autism by Des Fitzgerald Narrated by Tim Lundine